Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to part six of Crash Twin Sanity. In the last part, we discovered that we needed six power crystals in order to go to the tenth dimension where the evil twins reside. And luckily, we did find the fifth one while we were riding Dr. Cortex like a snowboard and destroying his testicles. Rest in peace, Cortex's testicles. But, uh... Now we're on this tanker ship, and we're looking for Enjin, Dr. Cortex's second-in-command, his second banana, because he might have a power crystal on board. Enjin has a rocket for a head. Oh! See? A big old rocket for a head. I imagine it's still active. I know when he gets pissed off, it actually, like, steams and goes red and stuff. <laughs> but, uh... Engine's battleship has a lot of rockets that are launching all over the place, and they can actually launch right next to you and damage you, so you gotta be careful. You gotta ride all these pistons and take on his rhinoceros henchmen, who are acting very, um... <laughs> that guy was very, very Donkey Kong, and, uh... A lot of rats here, too, but luckily the rats can be taken care of in just one little spin. As always, keep an eye out for colored gems throughout this place. There are six colored gems inside of this tanker ship, so uh, you do well to look out for them. Generally, when you're in a big wide room, you just go look all the way at the top floors, go around, and you should find them, no problem. And yeah, those rockets could damage you, man. The exhaust absolutely damages you. I was just trying to jump that gap, and then I took damage, and I was just like, Ah! <laughs> what the hell, game? What the hell? But yeah, keep an eye out for the colored gems. I don't think they're that hard to find in this particular area. At all. Again, when it comes to the big wide rooms, just go to the top floor, look around, and you're bound to find it. The draw distance is really good that you can see it from far away. And the only one you're really going to have trouble with is this one in particular. Because in the water room, there's all these rotating pistons that you need to climb on in order to get through this area. And it's very easy to climb on it, and then it goes a little bit too vertical, and then all of a sudden you're not standing upright anymore, and then you fall right into the water and drown, and uh, that's all she wrote, folks. But uh, it's very, very careful platforming with these pistons, and careful jumping, too. Because <laughs> if you don't make those jumps... Well, just like what happened with me, you drown, so be careful. I'm hitting all these uh, TNT plungers to detonate all these boxes to release the next plunger, to, de to release the next plunger, and then eventually I'm going to get the gem that's in this area. So uh, it's a little bit tricky platforming-wise, a little bit tricky. So Cortex's assistant is named N-Gin, N period G-I-N, kind of like engine. Ha ha ha. That's a running theme with all the Crash Bandicoot villains for some reason. Like Cortex, he has a big N on his forehead. He's N Cortex, but like, his first name is Neo, right? That's what the N stands for. He's Dr. Neo Cortex. And in the first game, he had an assistant named Enbrio. Kind of like Embryo. Huh? Huh? But, uh, the N for Enbrio actually stands for something. It stands for Nitrous. His full name is Nitrous Brio. And then, in Crash Bandicoot 3, they introduced a character known as Entropy. N period Tropy. Like... Like Entropy, you know. Haha. <laughs> but, like, that N actually stands for something, too. It's also, like, the first part of a name. His full name is Nefarious Tropy. So you got Neocortex, Nitrous Brio, Nefarious Tropy. But when N-Gin was introduced in Crash Bandicoot 2, and, you know, he's appeared in pretty much every single game since, N-Gin didn't really get a first name. You know, I checked the wikis. I checked the Crash Bandicoot wikis. He's just N-Gin. So what exactly does the N in N-Gin stand for? That's what I want to know, goddammit. That's what I want to know. Why doesn't he have a first name? And if he does, what is it? Expand the lore, Vivenda Universal. Expand the lore, Vicarious Visions, whoever do the next Crash Bandicoot game. If they do the next Crash Bandicoot game. Which they will. 
The Insane Trilogy sold so well, I don't see them not doing it, but I- OH GOD! So I'm just gonna speed up and go back to where I died, cause uh... Very easy to screw up your jumps here, very easy to screw up your jumps. And remember, if you get three Aku Aku masks in Crash to Insanity, I'm wearing the mask right now, and I can't just kill enemies by running into them, I still have to spin into them, unlike the Naughty Dog trilogy. And you still die in one hit from Nitro Boxes, so you absolutely gotta remember that in Twin Sanity, the Aku Aku Triple Mask Invulnerability bonus doesn't quite keep you invulnerable like it did in the Naughty Dog Trilogy, so uh, be careful, be careful. I do like Enjin as a character, though. I like that they give him sort of like the Igor personality that you would see in these old Frankenstein movies. Like, yes, Dr. Cortex, we will find Crash Bandicoot, and we will get the power crystals. I'm probably doing a horrible job impersonating Enjin. <laughs> but he's very Igor from any kind of horror movie monster, you know. And uh, now we're taking him on. So here's Enjin. He's constantly launching missiles. Like with all the previous bosses we've faced up to this point, just keep running in one particular direction. They never really shoot ahead of where you're going, so you don't need to worry about that. And then he throws a TNT box at you, and what you want to do is you want to position Crash just where the wooden planks are that are holding his terminal up. His platform up, I should say. And then when all three planks are destroyed with a TNT box, well, that's all she wrote. It's not that difficult of a boss, and in fact, I would say Twin Sanity doesn't really have a lot of difficult bosses. Some of the bosses in the Naughty Dog trilogy were certainly harder than this, and uh, I would say the hardest part of this game is the platforming and the various places you go to, uh, especially with the escort kind of stuff going on with Cortex. Whether he's being chased by bees, whether we're manipulating little tubes that he has to go into later, uh, the platforming stuff is definitely the harder parts of Twin Sanity, but the boss fights, eh, not too much. Boom! <laughs> ah, yummy! Fresh meat for my pot! No, this is the hard part. Engine was simple, but Rusty the Walrus here, who made his first debut in this game, he's not from any previous Crash game that I'm aware of, Rusty the Walrus is chasing you while there's a lot of steam, a lot of bottomless pits, there's a gem you need to collect while you're running away from him, so I just picked it up. Uh, the good news about when you die is that if you collected a gem before dying, you still have that gem. You don't have to recollect it. So as long as I you know, don't turn off my game. Oh god. <laughs> I got killed by Rusty. And the cutscene plays again, and I can't skip it. I'll talk about that as well, but, um... If you grab a gem, if you grab extra lives, uh, those will hang on to your character uh, after you die. You can... Well, not the lives, obviously. You'll lose one life. But if you collect a gem, when I run by where the gem was just previously, it won't be there because I technically have it. So I got all six colored gems of the tanker thing. Uh, one thing that sucks about Crash to Insanity, especially with boss fights or like the chase with Cortex where the Hornets were going after him, cutscenes are not skippable and sometimes checkpoints happen before a cutscene triggered. So if you die a lot in the first part of when Cortex is being chased by Hornets, you have to watch him talk about the noble boar, the humble bumblebee, every single time you reattempt that. And I'm sure there are better examples, like if you're fighting bosses like Madame Andr Averly later. Did I say that right? Madame Averly? Averly? I don't know. Watch out for the nitro boxes. They just kind of spring up in this chase, and one hit is all it takes. Doesn't matter how many Aku Aku masks you have. You touch Nitro once, you die. You fall in the pit once, you die. And it's so easy for Rusty the Walrus here to catch up, touch you once, and then boom, you have to go back to a previous checkpoint. It's, uh, it's a little tense, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little tense, this chase. Jesus Christ, go to hell, Rusty. Nobody likes you. <laughs> 
But with all the gems of this area, I now have all 24 gems of the ice world. So yeah. <laughs> The rats are leaving the sinking ship. Tell us where the treasure is and we'll let you go. Silent! Looks like we'll have to wring it out of him. Embryo, get changed. Again, would have been nice to have sound effects and screaming from Embryo when that was happening. I imagine because this game was rushed, we didn't get anything like that. But uh, yeah, these two are the guys I was talking about earlier. Uh, the big monster man who transformed himself into a monster, that's Embryo. Which again, all you really need to do is move right because he, he doesn't jump to where you are. You just constantly move right on the iceberg. He'll eventually get tired. And that's when Entropy shows up. And what he does is he shatters the iceberg, he splits it into a whole bunch of pieces. So I would recommend going to like the outer edge of the iceberg whenever Entropy shows up. Because that way you'll be on the outer ring. And you want to be on the outer ring because the icebergs sink. And the best thing you can do for the Entropy fight is just go to the outer ring and wait for it to sink a little, jump to the next one, wait for it to sink a little, jump to the next one, and all you're doing is you're waiting for Entropy's force field to go away so that you can spin into him and deal out damage. For the most part, it's pretty simple. It's just a matter of holding right, jumping a bit, force field goes away, jump towards him, spin into him. Booyah. You don't really have to worry too much about contact damage with Entropy. You do with Brio, because he turned into a really, really... I don't even know what the hell this is. He's just ugly, that's all. <laughs> He turned into something ugly, that's all. But for the most part, uh, you don't have to worry about these bosses really escalating at all. Whenever they do something, they're probably going to stick to that one thing they do, and you just keep doing it until the fight's over. And booyah! That's it for Entropy and Embryo, who apparently heard about the treasure from Dingadile the character whose outhouse we destroyed in the last part. Oh, don't worry, we're gonna see more of Dingadile. This way! To the Psychotron! <laughs> but we're back at the front of the Cortex Laboratory, and uh, now we just gotta go back to the Psychotron room. Like I said before, they're kind where they don't make you go through the entire platforming section all over again. Uh, the front door's still locked, but there is an elevator here that will take you exactly to where the Psychotron is. So don't worry, you don't have to backtrack through areas you've already been to. Twin Sanity is really good about making sure you don't backtrack at all, which I really, really appreciate. I mean, I'm not much of a Metroidvania guy, what can I say? You monster! Let my brother go! My crystals! <laughs> Ruined! Thanks to Perky here. It must be repaired, and only one person can help. My niece, Nina Cortex. Isn't she delightful? Obviously, I've made a few modifications here and there. <laughs> Quickly! To my private dirigible! Set a course for Madame Amberley's Academy of Evil! Come along! Madame Amberley, that's what it was. Well, sorry, Coco. Uh, we gotta go off without you again, because you're paralyzed again. Weird quirk about Coco here, though. Touch her! You take damage! If I touch her again, she will kill me! <laughs> I don't know why I take contact damage from Coco, but you do. So do not run into her after she gets paralyzed. 
Uh, another instance of cut content with this game, apparently the original plan was you were actually going to go inside of the mind of Coco while she was paralyzed, and then you'd go into her weird happy-go-lucky subconscious land where you fought like teddy bears and, and found lollipops and stuff like that, and I don't really know what that world was going to be like, but apparently that was an idea for a, a group of levels in Twin Sanity that didn't really make the cut. To be honest, a lot of things didn't make the cut, which make me think, like, there was a good reason a lot of that stuff was dropped, you know? Because this sounds like the most ambitious game in the world when you find out about all the things they wanted to cut. But, uh, you know. I guess we'll never know. We're riding Cortex's blimp to the Academy of Evil, and we'll go meet up with Nina Cortex in Part 7. See you then.